And the Lord God looked upon all that he had made, and lo, it was very good. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the to Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand so that the sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in, from this time forth and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from the Old Testament. Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you know when the mountain goats give birth? Do you observe the calving of the deer? Can you number the months that they fulfill, and do you know the time when they give birth? When they crouch to give birth to their offspring and are delivered of their young, their young ones become strong. They grow open in the, they grow up in the open and they go forth and do not return to them. Who has let the wild ass go free? Who, who has loosed the bonds of the swift ass to which I have given the steps for its home, the salt land for its dwelling place? It scorns the tumult of the city. It does not hear the shouts of the driver. It ranges the mountains as its pasture, and it searches after every green thing. Is a wild ox willing to serve you? Will it spend the night at your crib? Can you tie it in a furrow with ropes, or will it harrow the valleys after you? Will you depend on it because of its strength, because its strength is great, and will will you hand over your labor to it? Do you have faith in, in that it will return and bring you grain to your threshing floor? The ostrich wings flap wildly through its pinions like plumage, for it leaves its eggs to the earth and lets them be warmed on the ground. Forgetting that a foot may crush them, 
and that a wild animal may trample them. It deals cruelly with its young, as if it were not its own. Though its labor should be in vain, yet it has no fear, because God has made it forget wisdom, and given it no shame and understanding. When it spreads its plume to lop, it laughs in the horse and its rider. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, And no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is taken from the letter to the Philippians. 
Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Together let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let, Let people, people sing with your joy. joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can we live in this safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And grant us the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving God among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Most high, omnipotent, good Lord, grant your people grace to renounce gladly the vanities of this world, that following the way of blessed Francis, we may, for love of you, delight in your whole creation with perfectness of joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Jesus has lots of admirers, but not so many followers. This is a line I've heard uttered in good-natured humor many times by Christians of many different stripes. And it's arguably true. Jesus is a figure who is easy to admire, but hard to follow. The saint we honor today, however, Francis of Assisi, was not simply an admirer. He was a follower. 
And when we ask ourselves why, what made the difference in the life of Francis, we must ask ourselves a challenging question. How many of us enjoy being thought of as fools? Am I right in guessing that none of you just raised your hand? I certainly don't like that. I enjoy having the respect and the esteem of others, and I often go out of my way to say and do whatever I think might earn it. I don't at all enjoy being thought of as ignorant or worse. And Francis probably didn't either. For all the time leading up to that iconic moment when he stripped naked in the town square and disavowed his earthly inheritance, he had a lot of what we humans tend to value. He had a fair amount of wealth, he had friends, many of whom traveled in the elite social circles of the time. He had education. He had the respect of others. And in that one pivotal moment, he disavowed all of that. And for the rest of his life, he kept on disavowing it. Kissing lepers did not earn Francis respect. In fact, it very likely earned him not only disdain, but being shunned by anyone who knew of it, since they were probably afraid they would catch a disease from him. Going behind enemy lines for a parley with the Sultan during a military campaign in Egypt didn't turn him any points with anyone in his circle. It made him suspect and possibly even dangerous in a variety of ways. Founding a religious order whose main principle is to live not just symbolically, but in very tangible ways as people who are poor and homeless was an unpopular move then, and even to our day, it receives very mixed reviews. I believe it is with good reason that we read the passage we just heard from Matthew every time we celebrate this great saint. God has, according to Matthew's account of Jesus' sayings, hidden the divine truths from the wise and powerful of the world and revealed them to infants. Why? Because infants are unafraid to be fools. Infants are unafraid to engage in the sort of wild and sometimes seemingly inexplicable behavior that we see in a figure like Francis. Most of us grown folks hesitate a lot more. But being fools for the sake of Christ is what our faith is all about. In his writings, St. Paul says so directly. Now, that does not mean that every foolish behavior is an act of faith and righteousness. There are, of course, countless examples where that's not the case. But it does mean that if everything we say and do is met with acceptance and respect, there's something probably something big that we're missing. 
Many are old enough to remember an era in which church going was a key element in belonging to respectable society. Being a member of one of the right churches was the ticket into many other desirable positions in society. And this was certainly convenient. This was certainly comfortable, at least for those willing to play the game. But it was quite the opposite of the biblical exhortation to be fools for the sake of Christ. It was the opposite of the example we see in Francis. Being not just admirers, but followers of Jesus, sometimes puts us in some very awkward positions. It most certainly does not garner us social respect and status. And perhaps this is one of the ways in which there's a hidden gift in our otherwise very disturbing times. This is not, of course, the sort of era that any of us would have asked to live through. But even in a time like this, the Spirit of God is hard at work to build up the lives of those willing to step out in faith. It would be an overstatement to say that these times are entirely unprecedented. This is not the first pandemic. This is not the first time of unrest, upheaval, division, and conflict. It's not as if there were not signs of severe turbulence long before this moment arrived. But in this moment, I find that a defense that at least a privileged few of us may have had is gone. Now, I know that I speak from a place of privilege when I say this, but for the many years leading up to last year, I found it possible to, for the most part, please and retain the respect of people at least those with whom I had regular contact. As a student, as a teacher, as a husband, as a father, and as a preacher, of course I would ruffle a few feathers here and there, but for the most part the sailing was relatively smooth. This is no longer true, and I don't think it's true for much of anyone any longer. We're in a time when no one can stand on the sidelines. Choices about what to do and what not to do, and with whom to have close contact, have faced us every single day. And simply abdicating those choices isn't an option. And no matter what choices we make, we're going to be fools in the eyes of some unless we stay entirely within an ever-shrinking bubble of the like-minded, we're going to find people who stand up and applaud our choices, and we're going to find people who fear us and hold us in disdain for what we say and do. And in a strange way, I find this to be a gift. Another verse we could have easily read from Matthew is the one that concludes Jesus' celebrated Beatitudes. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. When we are able to do what Francis did, to finally let go of our attachment to the world's acceptance of us and the world's pleasure with us, there is paradoxically a blessing in it. Sure, some people will revile and persecute us, 
And on occasion, those people might even be among our inner circle. But Jesus promises us that there is great reward, even in this life and certainly in the next, for those courageous enough to be fools for his sake. So this, I believe, is St. Francis' great legacy for us. He went from being one of the wealthy and respectable ones, one of those who had a great deal to lose, to being a fool for Christ. He was more than willing to lose what he had because he was convinced that something of far greater value was calling to him. So he leaves us with a question. Are there places in our lives where we're being invited to make that trade? Are there places where we're hanging on to safety, to respectability, or perhaps just to plain old material goods? But Christ is inviting us to let go of them in search of something greater. Being a fool for Christ sounds great on paper, but when actually faced with the prospect, it's a scary thing. I wonder if Francis didn't have many false starts before actually taking the plunge. But take the plunge he did, and I'm confident that Christ invites us all to do the same.
Dear family of faith, let us now lift our hearts and voices in prayer. In the silences, please voice aloud or hold your hearts to those which you feel moved to offer. Thank you, God, for making yourself known to the peoples of the earth. Thank you for all the individuals and assemblies who gather to praise, worship, and pray to you. Thank you for the Anglican Communion, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, the Church of the Province of West Africa. Thank you for the Episcopal Church and our diocese, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, and Mark, our bishop, St. Francis Church in San Francisco, and St. Francis of Assisi Church in Nevada. Thank you for the faith assemblies in our region, especially St. Francis Anglican Church in Livermore. We lift up to you the Universal Church. Thank you, God, for bending the moral arc of the universe towards peace and justice. We lift up to you the world and all its needs. In places of war and conflict, especially Afghanistan, we ask that you would sow the seeds of peace and concord. In places of natural disaster, especially Haiti and the West and East Coast of the United States, we ask that you would bring relief, comfort, hope, and wisdom to everyone and everything affected. We pray you preserve and prosper the world you have made. Thank you, God, for this faith community of St. Bartholomew's. We lift up to you our life together and all our members. This week, please pour a special blessing upon Molly and David, Mike and Carol, Kyle, Holly, Hannah, and Emma. Protect and comfort those in military service Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Please watch over our congregation and its people. Thank you, God, for inspiring many among us to care for others in body, mind, and spirit. We lift up to you all who minister to others in need, especially all nurses, doctors, police, firefighters, educators, Brad O and Brad S. Give protection and encouragement to all who dedicate their lives to service, Thank you, God, for the healing mercies you pour upon those in need. We lift up to you all those who have requested our prayers for health and wholeness, especially for Olivia, Becky, Bert and Judy, Brett M., Carol, Kathy, Dave and Mary, Doris, Dottie S., Aaron, Esteban, Glennis and James, Helen, Janice and Bravo, Jim, Joanne, 
John and Hiroko, Catherine, Kip, Lee, Lisa B, Laura, Luke, Marion, Marge B, Mary L, Monty and Judy, Nick, Nora, Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, Michael E. Michael R. Tamara S. The Purcell Ordstad family, Father Ron Colmer and family, and the Sherman family. And I want to add healing prayers for all of God's children who have gone missing. May you all be rescued and feel God's warm love for you. Please comfort and heal all those who suffer and struggle in any way. Thank you, God, that when this mortal body lies in death, you welcome your servants into your nearer presence. We lift up to you those who have died, especially Colin O., Corey C., and Bernie S. Grant all the departed blessed rest and continual growth in your love. Thank you, God, for every good gift you give us. Thank you for those things that inspire joy and gratitude, especially for Caitlin C., who turned 15 this weekend, and for Luke, my BFFF. Please help us be aware of the blessings of this life and to enjoy them with glad and grateful hearts. Let us now gather all of our prayers, spoken and unspoken, in these words of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Amen.